Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Our question today comes from Steve, AA7ND. This is one of those that got lost in the black hole for a while. Hi, Dave. I put up a fan dipole with elements and wires for uh, 40, 20, 15, and 10. I got a secret for you. You can do that same fan dipole without the 15 meter wires. And it will still work. And the reason that it does that is 15 is the third harmonic of 40. So it's an odd harmonic. And so it will resonate on that too. Not perfectly, but it, it will do that. It says, I was going to build another for 30, 17, 12, and 6 meters, but the original is less than 3 to 1 and tunable by my Yesu DX10 uh, transceiver on all eight of these bands. The fan dipole is up 25 feet, and I use spacers made from PVC plastic to separate the four wires. Can you explain how this is possible? Well, to explain it, there's a number of things going on that creates the kind of reflections that create poor SWR. And sometimes it's amazing how much an antenna will tune, and other times it's you know, it's just not going to tune. So what I thought I would do is show you the SWR curves for three of my antennas. I have my step IR, big IR vertical set for 40 meters. So the copper strap is extended all the way to the top. The second one is my, let's see, it's a Z, ZS6 BKW antenna that we made for some videos. And the third antenna is my MFJ hex beam. And we're going to see some interesting and unusual things. Now, there are things that can make an SWR appear low, but it's not. And that's lossy coax, okay? Now, I don't have any real lossy coax in here, nor incredibly long lines. The longest line is the one on the ZS6 BKW right now, because the, my test wire for that thing is like 60 or 70 feet long. The wire for the big IR is actually about 75 or 80 feet, but it's thick coax from Messi Paolini. It's really high quality coax. You see, if you put out power and you lose it, there's not very much to come back. The SWR is basic, basically a function of the reflection coefficient. And so if not much is reflected because it's lost, then the SWR will look artificially low. Okay, and then there are other times when the resonant points of your antenna can be multiple depending on how high it is above the ground, what's around it, all the pieces of metal, whether it's near a house full of copper wiring, all of these kinds of things can affect the SWR. And sometimes it'll put an antenna right on top of a frequency you wouldn't think that it would resonate on. In other words, it doesn't always resonate on one frequency. It can kind of quasi-resonate on a bunch. So let's take a look at the computer screen here, and I'll do the three antennas. This is the ZS6BKW antenna. At about one and a half, we could go do that without a tuner even. Here is on 20 meters. Here's 17, and here is 15, and 12, and 10, and it's it's actually under two to one across the entire band. Now, if we look down here, here's 60 meters, which it's not designed to cover, but it does cover at less than two to one. Over here, we see on 80 meters, it's very good on the low part of the band, but by the time you get to the high part of the band, it's way up above two, but less than three. So your tuner can tune that. We're going to switch to a different antenna, so let me show you what we have here. This is, should be, a single band on 40 meters. And here's 40 meters, and it's got a very good SWR right there. Uh, if you wanted, you could use the tuner in your radio to, to knock out even this little bit, but you don't need to. And look, it's even better on 15 meters. Remember, I mentioned that this is the third harmonic of 40 meters, and so the antenna will resonate on that as a three halves wavelength antenna, okay? Now, let's look at some of these other things in here. This should be a single band antenna for 40 meters. It's actually pretty good on 20 meters. Now, if you were to change the location of it, change the other antennas that I've got up in the yard and so on, 
This could easily move over into here and not be a good peak, but here it looks like it'll work just fine. Now on 17 meters, we're right at 2.0. Uh, you could tune that with your uh, rigs tuner very easily. Of course, 15 is good. 12 is uh, iffy, but you could tune that down. And 10 meters, look at that. It's under 2 across the entire band and down to about 1.5 if you go uh, all the way across. So this is a single band antenna that just happens to pick up resonances on other bands. Look down here on 80 meters. You could do this with your built-in tuner but you can see that the match is not all that fantastic. The hex beam is supposed to work on 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10, and it does on all those bands. I would go ahead and use the internal tuner with this, but notice these other resonances that kind of stick in here. Here's what could be a resonance outside the ham band. And on 80, low 80, it actually comes all the way down to here. Now, this does not give you any indication of the radiation pattern. This is strictly SWR. The radiation pattern would also be very important. We looked at three different antennas and discovered that the resonant curves are kind of weird. And if it happens to fall in another handband, you can go ahead and use that and use the tuner in your radio to get it down a little bit more. Now, something that's very interesting about antennas, there are some real popular antennas out there right now. The Buddy Pole, the Wolf River Coils antennas and so on, they deliberately introduce some loss. Uh, the coil on a Wolf River coil is made of stainless steel, which is not that good a conductor. And if you're using all of the coil, you are inserting five ohms of purely resistance into the antenna circuit and that will make the SWR look better than it really is. Okay, that's a little weirdism about these antennas with these exotic coils and there are a number of them that have coils at the bottom. If those coils are stainless steel, yeah, great, they don't rust, they don't turn green, whatever, but the fact of the matter is that by inserting that resistance, you're making the actual SWR you're working into seem less. In fact, it could seem quite a bit less than what it really is. So those antennas do work because you've got five ohms of resistive impedance and up to 45 ohms of radiation resistance. And so, you know, you pay your money and you take your choice. When we have compared these antennas like to the big IR, which is not a compromise antenna, it's got the full length tape up in the tube and it has about 30 radials around it. So it's pretty well radialized, not radicalized, just radialized. Anyway, so can you have an antenna that's cut for 40, 20, 15, and 10, and have it radiate reasonably well on other bands? Yes, but part of the good performance, SWR-wise, might be some losses somewhere in the system. And second, and this is important, we don't know what the radiation pattern is. You'd have to model the antenna to determine what the radiation pattern is. And even having done so, the model might not tell you that you're getting a good SWR when in fact you are. So again, the first rule of antennas is that everything affects everything. So that's placement, height above ground, whether it's near trees, other wires in the area, whether there's a great big propane tank out back like I've got or something like that. Or maybe there's other antennas nearby that will radiate sympathetically with them. So if you like have a 20 meter dipole and up on the hex beam is a 20 meter uh, two element beam, the dipole on 20 can somewhat excite that antenna, the 20 meter element on the other antenna and you get funny radiation patterns and things like that. Also because that's taking power away from the antenna, it will make the SWR look lower. So I hope that answers your question. I wanted to generalize it just a little bit more and look at some of these different antennas to show this simple fact that any given antenna will have resonances where you least expect them, okay? So 
If you change anything about the antenna, say it's a 40 meter antenna and you tweak it a little bit, like you want to move from the bottom of the band to the upper part of the band, it'll throw all the other resonances off. Okay, so we went into a little bit more depth uh, on that because I wanted to talk in general about using antennas on bands they weren't built for. If you have something like the uh, Nano VNA, this is the Nano VNA and I had that connected. This goes up to the computer and drives what you saw on the screen there. So there we go. If you would like to help support this channel, please feel free to do so first. Just subscribe, select notify if you want so you learn about the new videos as they come out. And also if you'd like, uh, become a channel member or something like that. Or just throw in a super chat if you want to do a one-time addition to our, our channel funds. And until we next meet, 73.